keeping kids safe. It's like the most important thing, right? Absolutely. And when it comes to medication errors, well, the consequences, they can be just devastating. Yeah, scary to think about. You know, it's shocking, really. Uh, a child in the U.S. experiences poisoning every, what, like every eight minutes or so. It's a really disturbing statistic. Yeah, and I mean, sure, child-resistant packaging helps a lot, but there's still so many risks out there. It's a constant worry for parents and healthcare providers alike, definitely. So today, we're going to zero in on some medications that are particularly dangerous for kids. We're talking about medications where even tiny amounts can be fatal. Yeah, we need to be extra careful with these. Absolutely. So to kick things off, think about the average toddler. Right. They usually weigh, what, between 10 and 15 kilograms? Yeah, somewhere in that range. And they love to explore the world by, you know, putting things in their mouth. That's how they learn, right? Exactly. So it's crucial to think about all the medications in the house, both over-the-counter and prescription. You really have to be mindful of everything. So let's start with calcium channel blockers. These are medications like verapamil, diltiazem, and amlodipine. Right. Those are commonly prescribed for hypertension in adults. But here's the thing. A dose for a 200-pound adult, way too much for a 40-pound child. Oh, absolutely. Just one pill can be deadly. And for some of these medications, the potentially fatal dose is just 15 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. That's a tiny amount, especially for a little one. And to make matters worse, the highest tablet strength available is 360 milligrams. So you can see how easy it would be for a child to get into serious trouble. Exactly. So let's say you have a 10 kilogram child. A fatal dose could be as low as 150 milligrams. And that 360 milligram pill is more than double that. The real danger here is myocardial suppression. Right, meaning the heart muscle just can't pump effectively. So what kind of clinical signs would we be looking for? Well, you'd see a prolonged PR interval on the electrocardiogram, greater than 0 0.20 seconds, which indicates a first-degree heart block. And I imagine their heart rate would be slow too, right? Yeah, you'd likely see bradycardia, and their blood pressure would probably drop, leading to hypotension. These medications really hit a child's smaller cardiovascular system Hard. It's terrifying how quickly things can go south. It really is. Even a small disruption in calcium flow can have catastrophic consequences. All right, moving on to tricyclic antidepressants, medications like amitriptyline. Also known by the brand name Elevil. They used to be prescribed for depression. That's right, and also for headaches and seizures. And the potentially fatal dose here is also around 15 milligrams per kilogram. Yeah, similar to calcium channel blockers. The highest dose available on a tablet is 150 milligrams. So still dangerous, but a bit lower than some calcium channel blockers. What are the signs we should watch out for with tricyclic antidepressant poisoning? You might see seizures. Seizures. <laughs> yeah. And also a rapid heart rate, what we call tachycardia. Sadly, things can deteriorate quickly from there, leading to coma and even death. These medications are really messing with the heart's rhythm. They interfere with sodium channels and alpha-1 adrantic receptors, disrupting the heart's electrical activity. So in an adult, we'd look for a widening QRS complex on the EKG, right? Exactly. That's a key indicator. Now, on to antimalarial medications, like Claroquin. And hydroxychloroquine, which we heard a lot about during the COVID-19 pandemic. The potentially fatal dose for these is about 20 milligrams per kilogram. And the highest tablet strength available is 500 milligrams. Okay, so these medications work by blocking sodium channels, right? Yes, and they can also damage the retina. Which means? Vision loss or blurred vision. And the main concern for the heart is a prolonged QT interval. Right, which can lead to torsades de points. Which is? A type of ventricular tachycardia, and that can progress to ventricular fibrillation and ultimately death. I imagine a child's developing eyes might be even more vulnerable to the toxic effects. Yeah, that's definitely a concern. Okay, let's move on to opiates. These include medications like codeine, hydrocodone, methadone, and fentanyl patches. And the big danger here is respiratory depression. Meaning they slow down breathing. Or even stop it completely. So even tiny amounts of these can be lethal, especially for children. Absolutely. For codeine, a potentially fatal dose is about 10 milligrams per kilogram, and the highest dose available is 60 milligrams. For hydrocodone, it's between 1 and 5 milligrams per kilogram with a max dose of 30. 
Methadone similar with a potentially fatal dose of 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram and a highest dose of 40 milligrams. And then there are fentanyl patches. Those are a whole other level of scary. Oh, so. The potentially fatal dose is just 1 to 2 micrograms per kilogram. Micrograms? Yes. And these patches can contain up to 300 micrograms of fentanyl designed to be released every hour. So even accidental skin contact or ingesting part of a patch could be devastating. Definitely. Extreme caution is needed. Okay, switching gears to sulfonylureas, medications like glipicide and glyburide. Right. These are used for type 2 diabetes. And metformin. Metformin is also used for type 2 diabetes, but it doesn't carry the same risk of fatality from a small ingestion. Good to know. So with sulfonylureas, the potentially fatal dose is incredibly low. Just 0.1 milligrams per kilogram, and the highest tablet strength is 10 milligrams. So these medications work by increasing insulin, right? Exactly. They stimulate the release of insulin, which can lead to severe hypoglycemia if a child overdoses. Meaning low blood sugar. Yes. And that can lead to seizures, coma, and even death. So if you suspect a child has ingested a sulfonylurea, you need to act fast. Absolutely. Check their blood glucose immediately and monitor them closely for any drops in their blood sugar. Time is critical here. It really is. All right, next up antiarrhythmic medications. Examples of these include procainamide and lidocaine. The potentially fatal dose is around 25 milligrams per kilogram. And the highest dose available is 150 milligrams, whether it's in a vial or a tablet. So these medications, they also work by blocking sodium channels, like some of the heart medications we talked about earlier. That's right. This disruption of sodium flow messes with the heart's electrical activity. And I imagine we'd see changes on the EKG. Definitely. You'd see prolonged PR, QRS, and QT intervals. It's a reminder that so many of these medications affect the heart in dangerous ways. Absolutely. Always trust your gut and believe a child if they say they've ingested something. Okay, so let's talk about what we can do in the field if we suspect uh, pediatric poisoning. The first steps are always the ABCs. Airway, breathing, and circulation. Make sure the child's airway is clear, they're breathing adequately, and their circulation is good. And supplemental oxygen if needed, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you might need IV fluids for resuscitation. The focus should be on managing the child's specific symptoms. What about gastrointestinal decontamination? Well, activated charcoal used to be a common pre-hospital treatment. Oh, I remember that. But it's not really used in the field anymore. They might still use it in the emergency department, but not so much in pre-hospital settings. So what else can we do? Well, you can alkalinize the urine to help get rid of certain toxins. And you also need to manage the specific toxidromes. Toxidromes. Yeah, those are like groups of symptoms that can develop with certain types of poisoning. So are there any specific antidotes we should know about? There are a few key ones that are good to be aware of. For opioid overdoses, there's naloxone. Narcan. Right. The dose is usually 0.4 to 2 milligrams given IM or IV. And what about tricyclic antidepressant overdoses? If they're causing significant cardiac toxicity, we can use sodium bicarbonate. The dose is 1 to 2 milliequivalents per kilogram. And for sulfonylurea overdoses? If there's severe hypoglycemia, we can use octreotide at a dose of 1 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per dose. So the big takeaway here is that even small amounts of these medications can have huge consequences for kids. Absolutely. It's really a one pill can kill situation. And it's just so important to remember that kids are different from adults. They metabolize things differently. Their bodies are smaller. They're just more vulnerable. So it's on us as healthcare providers to educate families about medication safety. We have a responsibility to prevent these tragedies from happening. So before we wrap up, I want you to think about this. Mm -hmm. What specific steps can you take in your practice to make things safer for kids? What can you do to prevent accidental poisonings? It's a question worth pondering. It really is. We all have a role to play in keeping our youngest patients safe. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.